In today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Skyguider Pro by Optron, which was loaned to me by First Light Optics and Icarus Imaging. And I want to answer a question by doing a little experiment. I want to find out how well it tracks with the night sky with my 135mm lens. So I'll be taking a bunch of exposures at different exposure lengths and we'll take a look at the sub exposures. Now, star trackers and tracking the night sky massively depends on what focal length optics you're using because a 28mm lens is going to track with the night sky a lot better and a lot longer than say a quite long apochromatic refractor with three 400 millimeters focal length you can kind of think of it as if you hold your finger out at arm's length you can kind of keep it still unless you've had a lot of coffee uh, but if you hold a pull cue and look at the tip of the pull cue i.e more focal length it's a lot more difficult to keep still and it's the same thing with tracking the night sky and focal length the more of it you've got the harder it is to track with the night sky one thing i need to do is well it's, it's a really important thing really if we're doing any experiment we want to reduce our error so we can be more certain that the results we get are accurate so the things i'm going to be doing to help with this experiment and to be sure that the results we're looking at are accurate are is we're going to reduce uncertainty by getting a very good polar alignment using the built-in iPolar that comes with the Skyguider Pro. This particular model of Skyguider Pro you can get it with the optical polar scope or the iPolar version. Um, I've got the iPolar version lent to me. Um, so I'll get a really good polar alignment so we can throw that out as a source of uncertainty if we get any trailing stars. Also I don't want to have any camera shake by setting the exposures up by pressing the button on the camera so I'll be using a trigger release to get rid of any shake I'll be shielding it from the wind hopefully and I'll also be balancing that's the that's the other thing really important to get the balance right so once you have moved your camera to where you want to take pictures you need to sort of rebalance the system because any tilt on that camera kind of shifts the balance so we're going to pay close attention to the balance on right ascension between the counterweight and the camera and the lens i think that's as much as i can do to reduce any uncertainty in this little experiment and hopefully we get to learn something from it this is the lens i'm using it's by Asai pentax it's a super tacomar lens it's m42 fit so i'll be using my m42 to fuji x mount adapter also has this cool hood to help keep dew off but i am using a heater band as well let's take this beast outside and set it up let's stop down the lens to about f8 just to make sure the stars are nice and round with the optics so we don't get confused between sort of coma and star trails as you can see on the screen i've done the eye polar polar alignment and i don't think there's much room for improvement there I need to point the camera somewhere now to get some kind of star field to use. Um, I'm going to use Polaris. No, you're joking. No, we want to choose somewhere really far away from Polaris because obviously Polaris ain't going to move. Now I've got the camera pointing to where I want it to and I've got focus sorted and everything else sorted. Because I've moved the camera, I do, I do need to do a double check of the balance on right ascension. That's pretty good. Okay, so last night I took a bunch of exposures ranging from 20 seconds all the way up to 240 seconds or four minutes. And we can take a look at those now, zoom in on the subs and to see at what point the stars start to trail. And that gives us our answer hopefully of how well a Ioptron Skyguider Pro tracks with a 135 mm lens, which is kind of a middle focal length as mentioned. So hopefully people can get an idea from this little video how well their tracker will perform with their lens or their telescope. So here we have all the subs from last night, starting at 20 seconds. As said, I've taken several at each exposure length and they, they're kind of separated by 20 seconds initially, so 20, 40, 60, etc. If I zoom in on this first one at 20 seconds, you can imagine that the stars definitely would be round with good polar alignment. 
So I think we need to probably skip ahead really. We'll have a quick look at 40 seconds as well. Again, as you'd expect, nice and round. Going ahead. 60 seconds. Starting to bring out a little bit of star colour now. Let's zoom in on that one. And yeah, I think they're quite round. I'd be happy with those. And we'll have a look at one more from a set of 60 second subs. Yeah, definitely. I think they're definitely nice and round. No smearing of photons there. Now we're up to 80 seconds exposure. And things are starting to look a bit richer, which is nice. Start to see the blues and the yellows of the stars coming through now. This goes to show you do need a little bit of exposure time to bring out the colour in the stars. Um, some kind of artifact there that keeps showing up. But yeah, there. You can kind of see they're very, very slightly eggy, but nothing that would put me off stacking. You certainly can't see it when you zoom out. I'd be happy to stack those. And we'll have a look at one more from the 80 second set subs. Yeah, I think I. They're not 100% round, but they're not. They're only just slightly eggy. So I'd be okay with those. Let's go forward to 100 seconds now. It's starting to look quite pleasant to look at at the star field. And they are starting to look a bit eggy when you zoom right in, just a tiny bit. I think I'd still be happy. And we'll take another look at one more just to make sure they're consistent. The periodic error on the Sky Guider Pro, the example I've got, I've been really impressed with because the subs do come out looking really consistent. They don't vary from sub to sub. They all look how the previous one did. So that's that's quite impressive, really. Yeah, yeah, they're starting to go pretty eggy now. But would I use them? Uh, let me have a look at one more and decide. Oh, a bit too far. not really apparent when you zoom out so weighing up signal with sharpness I think that's kind of my limit I think 1 minute 40 would be the limit that I'd go for with this mount and a 135 mil lens but for fun let's just go and see what the longer exposures are like so skip to 140 They're getting pretty eggy now. Starting to go from eggy stars to almost lines really. And that's when the clouds rolled in, but they did pass. And I just kept on going, just to see what happened. And I went all the way up to 240 seconds sub. So let's have a look at one of those. You can see there's quite a lot of sky glow. But yeah, they, I wouldn't stack those. That's just too much. So yeah, 100, 100 seconds I'd be happy with. But I think everyone's mileage kind of varies with what they'd accept to stack. Okay, that's it I think. I think that kind of shows what we set out to find out and that's how long the Sky Guider Pro would track for successfully with a medium focal length lens. Your mileage might vary with what you'd be willing to accept in terms of trailing stars. So I'd be interested to hear about that in the comments if you've got a different opinion from me or you agree that around about 100, 120 seconds is the limit for that kind of lens. And extrapolating, I think a wide lens like a 28mm lens would probably do easily four minutes and a small apo with 300mm focal length say would be I don't know maybe less than a minute 
I mean, this is unguided, so you probably wouldn't really expect more from a Star Trekker. The impressive thing is that it's really consistent. You're getting really consistent subs from this mount. I'm quite impressed with it. I've probably got to send it back soon, so I don't know if this is the last video I'll do with this mount. Um, but it's been a blast and I've enjoyed it and I'll look into getting some other kits test. Okay, thank you.